Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Uh, this video is going to be a bit different from the ones that I usually do, but we're just going to have some fun today and do a little bit of an experiment. If you've been following along with the channel, you know that I've been tearing down an old Caterpillar D2 engine. This is a D3400 diesel engine out of an early J-series Cat D2. And during disassembly, I found that it has the old style Caterpillar multi-piece pistons in it. These were notorious for failing because they are an aluminum bodied piston with a steel top ring land that is actually sandwiched onto the piston by the outer diameter of the piston crown which threads on the main piston body like a nut and is meant to hold that steel top ring land in place. Now these were notorious like I said for failing but typically when they would fail this top portion would start unthreading and come apart to the point that you'd start having contact with the cylinder head and then chunks would fly off and you'd get molten pieces of aluminum spraying out the exhaust and all over and it would rattle and knock and bang and just really really destroy anything that was in its vicinity. So um, luckily this one had just started to loosen up. I can just get a little bit of movement on that uh, that uh, outer crown piece. So I had a few uh, viewers suggest, hey, why don't we see if we can take this thing apart and just look at all the different pieces and see how it's constructed. I've never had one of these apart because usually by the time they failed, they are, <laughs> they are not really intact anymore. Luckily this one just started to loosen up. So I think that's a good idea. I'm never gonna put it back into an engine anyway. So let's see if we can't get that thing apart. So of course, first thing I need to do is get the rings off of it and get it cleaned up just a bit. So here's one of the best swap meet finds ever. It's this old ring expander tool. It just works great. Supports the rings well on all sides and makes uh, removing and installing them just easy as it can be. Takes them right out like that. I'm not going to uh, bother with keeping track of what ring went where because none of this stuff is ever going to be reused ever again. Get the third compression ring off. First oil control, line on the bottom side, catch the gap, comes right off. Second oil control. Easy as that. Now to get some of this carbon off so I can have a better view of what I'm doing. You can see how loose that outer ring was, even pops up and down on the threads, really starting to loosen on there. Man, this whole thing was an oil burner. This carbon is just thick on here. I guess you could say it's my kind of hybrid. Diesel fuel and engine oil. Burns them both. All right, now that the exterior's clean, I'm gonna pop these uh, C-clips out of here and disassemble the piston from the rod. Alright, so I've relocated to the newer shop where the lighting is all around better and I can actually see what I'm doing. Um, it's time to start taking this apart. I really don't know what I'm doing here, but I've checked this thing over inside and out all around and the only means of retention that I can see to uh, have uh, pinned this top outer ring in place is again these um, dimples that I pointed out that are 180 degrees off from one another already. So I'm pretty sure by looking inside to the center after all the carbon is scraped out, I believe there is a steel pin in there and that this rounded portion is material that was just kind of mashed over, peened in over the top of it to help ensure that's not gonna come out. Um, this dimple is a lot bigger around than the one on the other side, but I think this one used to be larger, but we have more of this uh, carbon scuffing going on on this side. Um, not quite so much over here, but that carbon scuffing is something that happens on aluminum pistons um, because they come up and stop at the same top dead center high mark all the time. That top compression ring only uh, scrapes and keeps the cylinder wall clean up to a certain point. Everything above it can fill up with carbon in that small gap between the cylinder wall and the piston. And this scuffing is what uh, ensues. That carbon gets in there and flakes off and, 
and can float around and you can see it really puts a lot of uh, a lot of score marks in there so that's really something that's actually uh, kind of common so now to start taking this apart I don't want to completely destroy it because I do kind of want to see how it's constructed so I think I may start on this side where it's worn worse anyway and uh, I think I'm going to start with a Dremel tool and see if I can take aluminum out around what looks like to be that pin in the middle right there. I thought about just trying to drill it out with a bit, but I'd kind of like to do a little bit of uh, careful excavating there and see if I can see uh, if indeed that is a pin and what it looks like. So I'm going to start with that. So after messing around with the Dremel for a bit, I was not able to locate anything in there that seemed like it was steel in any way. Um, it all just seemed like regular soft aluminum. So I'm gonna go back to my initial plan, which is just to use the drill press and I'll drill this one through till I get down to about where the piston body would be and we'll see what we can find. Time for a quick update. I've drilled in just about the full depth of the outer threaded portion, and I noticed that when I got down just about to where the threaded uh, joint would be, that the outer ring actually tightened up a little bit, which tells me I was displacing material and I changed some of the clearance that was going on in there. So I took it out of the drill press and I just worked that top piece until it loosened up again, and I saw a faint dark circle uh, kind of appear down in the bottom of the hole just off of the drill bit center line just a bit and that tells me that it is an aluminum pin that's in there I can tell you with 100% certainty at this point that it is not steel and it looks like it's about 3 16 of an inch in diameter uh, I did get this to loosen back up again and the way that the uh, the oily carbony stuff is starting to appear around what looks like the outside diameter of that pin tells me that I've pretty much got the press fit portion drilled out, that it was only still tight in this ring and it's been hogging loose inside the, uh, the hole in the uh, top of the piston here. So I'm going to see if I can extract that without drilling it completely out because I'd really like to know what it looks like. Okay, so I drilled a hole through the center of what looks like is the pin. I'm trying to grab it with this small tap hopefully it's enough to pull it out of there yep look at that look at that we got it <laughs> yeah buddy and it is just an aluminum pin like I said about 3 16 in diameter I'm guessing it's probably all oh, about that long before I started drilling on it take a look at the piston here yep you can see the hole that was in there so that is what it is. It's an aluminum pin, one on each side. So now I know exactly what I have to do on this side, and my suspicion was correct. At first I thought that would have been a steel pin, because so you can see just the end of it right here in the center, but it is aluminum, and this outer portion, this dimple, is just where they mashed uh, uh, material in around the top of that uh, retention pin just to make sure it didn't work out. So I know exactly what I need to do to get this one out of this side now. There's that pin. And now to see what it's going to take to get that apart. It's already moving rather easily. Don't oh, tell that point right there. It tightens on. Anyway, it's probably just going to take some, some work and get it off. I suppose there's a lot of carbon and everything else sticking in those threads. But that's where it used to be when all that stuff was loose and you can go that much further before that top ring land actually tightens in again. So there is some wear in there. 
So best laid plans, right? I got this thing about a third of a turn counterclockwise and it just sees right and it's not even moving anymore. And I've had tools on it. Uh, I can get a little bit of movement back clockwise, but I can't make it come off any further than it is right now. What I think happened was uh, where this uh, upper ringland insert had been banging in there, pretty sure it galled or it mashed that bottom thread. So as soon as I started going counterclockwise, that, uh, that mashed in lower thread came up into the rest of them and it just seized itself right in. So at this point, I think what I'm gonna to have to do is split it to get it off. I really didn't wanna to have to do that, but I really don't have any other option now. Alrighty, about three minutes with a Dremel solved that little problem. I split it on that hole that I had drilled to get the pin out. I still had to pound a chisel in there so that the taper would go ahead and spread it and uh, finish uh, cracking it the rest of the way. But once I did that, it came off relatively easily and I thought the threads would have galled towards the bottom. I was wrong. They actually galled about two threads up in so that was likely you can see them right around there. That was likely that way uh, before I even tried taking this apart. Um, probably did that when this was rattling around with the engine running so that top ring land can come out now and I was kind of surprised to see a tapered seat on the bottom of this uh, uh, this top piston ring that matched a taper on the ring land. It's flat on the other side and that's what's left of the piston. You can see that thread right there. When they gall like that, you got a pretty hard time taking anything apart. So pretty much had to split that top ring to get it, get it off. But there's the one uh, hole for the pin and there is the corresponding uh, hole for the other pin on the other side. So this is the notorious much feared, dreaded, multi-piece Caterpillar piston. Uh, like I say, was not one of Cat's best ideas and they were pretty notorious for coming apart back in the day. Well, that ended up being kind of a fun little project and credit goes out to you, the viewers, for requesting it. If you hadn't made the request, I probably wouldn't have taken the time to do it, but I'm kind of, kind of glad that I did now. It was, uh, it was fun and I learned something. Uh, I've seen pictures of those pistons after they've come apart during engine operation and lost a bunch of pieces and pretty much grenaded themselves and didn't really look like anything anymore. And it's not every day you get the opportunity to catch one just as it was starting to loosen up. So it was the perfect time to uh, get in there and see how it was all put together. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Tune in again next time.